What is the difference between successful language learners and those who just can't seem to get very far no matter how hard they try? Is there a list of characteristics that ensure success on the journey to lifelong fluency? After several years of helping people learn English and my own language learning, I have learned that there is such a list. So guys, while everybody is unique in their learning styles, beliefs, their talents, but there are certain characteristics that are universally essential for language learning success. Contrary to what most people believe, the most important characteristics are usually more related to courage, confidence, and hard work than grammar and intelligence. And sure enough, some people have a special ability to learn languages, which helps, but such special talent is not as common as most people think. The first of all, I think that the most successful language learners are connected to a powerful, innate sense of why they are learning. So you can call this passion, you know, purpose, inspiration, imagination, and even a vision. While heart is definitely not the most tangible or objective aspects of language learners, it is absolutely necessary. This is why the grammar books are boring and traditional schools don't actually result in fluency for most learners. It's hard work to learn language and even if you discipline yourself, study your whole life, it's long and painful learning when your heart is not in it. So the best language learners have a deep internal reason for learning that nobody else imposed upon them. So they may have been born with this sense of purpose or may, maybe they discovered it through their own exploration, but a burning desire is an indispensable part of success. Despite what society conditions them to believe, you know, like learning English is important for getting a good job, right? This is what most people say. In their hearts, they are, they are learning because they feel connected to the process. And of course, the better job, salary increase, travel, international friends, you know, they are also uh, an extra reward in this process. So being connected to a deep sense of purpose opens up, opens our imagination, I can say. And this makes the long and arduous journey more effective, more relaxed, and infinitely more enjoyable. The second, I think that the most English, uh, successful English learners, uh, those are that take responsibility for their learning and they develop the proactivity to take charge of their process. They never blame their circumstances or the other people. They are not satisfied with mediocrity. They don't let themselves get deceived by quick fix solution. You know, like come to our course, we're going to teach you English three or four months. So this is just the false solutions and the promises. So if you are not willing to learn, guys, nobody can help you. But if you are willing to learn, nobody can stop you. I know that there are a lot of uh, confusing messages out there. You know, the programs and schools, language centers everywhere proclaim that they have the magic bullet, magic solution that will change everything, you know, uh, if you just sign up for their course or buy their product, you know, as if, you know, language, uh, a language uh, were a computer chip in your brain. Such a, such a marketing message sells, but it's not true and it ignores the real reason why people, that's why the people, you know, just fail. They trip over themselves. While most people are happy to pay, I know that somebody you know, else to take full responsibility for the results, a proactive language learners understand that you know, success is the combination of important factors. Yeah, teachers, resources, methods, strategies, styles, they're important, but whatever you do, it all comes back to you. What you do and your ability to take responsibility for your, le for your learning. So successful English learners are generally, uh, I think, also good at implementing um, strong and uh, diligent daily habits, which is one form or another includes uh, practice in their lives. They know that to be good at, at anything, practically, you must do it consistently with attention and do it over and over and over and again until it becomes an unconscious part of you. They also know that you know, this, uh, this routine needs to feel natural, practical, not forced, right? So strong daily habits are the pretty simple formula for success. 
but surprisingly, very few people implement this in their life. So there are basically two important reasons for this. The first and the most important reason, I think, that people have difficulty forming habits. And this is a, is a question of attitude. In, in other words, like 90% of the people fail to reach fluency because they haven't developed the above mentioned characteristics. The foundation of any good habit is first to truly be inspired and then take responsibility for the results you create. And these are the two powerful characteristics that they greatly fac facilitate the formation of new habits. And without them, you know, like no amount of good strategies will be of good use. If you truly, if you are truly passionate about your learning and are taking responsibility, yeah, there may be uh, some secondary reasons that requires a deeper understanding of habit formation. You know, I, yeah. I mean, while this is a uh, the topic that demands a, a stronger and more detailed explanation, but here I'm going to give you four key ideas for successful habit formation. The first of all is that resistance, you know, like understanding the internal and external obstacles that prevent habit formation. This helps you like short circuit them, you know, and makes your process a lot easier. The second is willpower. Willpower is finite resource, like a muscle. Muscle gets uh, tired, like it's really tiring to form a new habit. But after four to six weeks, it just gets a lot easier. Continuous small changes are sustainable and don't exhaust us. It takes just four to six weeks for a habit to become permanent. Four to six weeks, you know, the habit becomes automatic and no longer requires so much willpower. After this time, we will actually feel attracted to the, to the new habit. Next one, it's okay not to be perfect, guys. People have the unrealistic expectation that they need to be perfect in their habits. And when they are not, they tend to get discouraged and just simply give up. The recipe for success is just shoot for 100%, but be content with 80%. If you fall off the horse with your new habit, don't panic, relax, get back on. So good language learners know that they only, the, the only way that to learn anything worth learning is to risk um, embarrassment, to make mistakes, and to make lots of them. People won't always understand you, I know, but people may even laugh at you. But successful language learners have the ability to be okay with this. As the one of the famous uh, authors said, like mistakes are the portal of discovery. So when you learn a new language, you have to make yourself vulnerable. You have to erode. And a good way to do this is just develop the courage to laugh at yourself. Don't take yourself so seriously. Accept that it's, a, it's going to be embarrassing and even awkward at first, but it's an important part of the process. These are your best learning opportunities. And the beauty of this you know, is that the learning to be okay with your imperfections will make you more confident and secure. As you'll realize that you know, your fears were just illusions. If people laugh at you, criticize you in a negative way, it doesn't have to be your problem. You have to accept who you are in your process. And this is the only way to get fooled. Like a child, look at there, like learning to walk, right? You need to fold and get back up, make an effort, be okay with falling. It, even if it's, it's, it's to be expected. In fact, if you are not making mistakes, you are, you are doing something wrong. And this will build uh, courage, it will build confidence, it will quickly melt your fear away. And with good strategy, little by little, it will build all of the skills you need to speak fluently. But false perfectionism, yeah, it's alternative. And it's like, you know, it's a great obstacle for your learning. The world is full of language learners who do not risk, who do not make themselves vulnerable, and who do not know how to laugh at themselves. And the, the result is that they do not learn. So guys, you know, like those people, you know, they just hide behind the idea that they are perfectionists, that they are waiting until they know enough English to speak it. They often get, you know, um, the, 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 the pretty good grades in school, but they don't understand that they haven't learned anything if they cannot apply it. Again, finally, like imagine a child who doesn't know how to, 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 to walk. They're just saying that, you know, I'm going to wait until I know how to walk perfectly before I walk. You know, that's the silly idea, right? It's the silly idea of perfectionism and it doesn't make any sense. 
Good luck.